salute to every single last one of you, and welcome to the Yoshi Cast. I'm Yoshi, and this is episode 23 of Bag and Board. Yoshi! Thank you for joining me, everybody, as I take at a ridiculous amount of care in bagging and boarding the books I've picked up since the last video. Also, I attended a local Comic-Con. The Bellingham Comic-Con occurred last Saturday, and I went with some friends and did some videotaping and walking around the convention. There were a bunch of comic book uh, dealers this year. It also felt like it was bigger this year, that there were more attendees and more booths. And, uh, you know, it's still a very small, tight con, but it's getting bigger and more popular. You got people coming down from Canada, uh, people coming up from Seattle and a little bit further. Uh, it was just, it was a good show. I saw the local comics place there. I also uh, re-met up with uh, comic book artist Randy Amberlin and got a sketch cover commission coming from him. And uh, I got to meet a living legend. I got to meet Roger Sweet, the, the creator of He-Man. How freaking cool is that? This guy, I have gone to a bunch of conventions, everybody. I have, I have met a bunch of celebrities. I've shaken hands. I've gotten signatures. I've talked with them. Roger Sweet, hands down, the nicest person I have ever met. Completely blown away by how many people care about his work with He-Man. Uh, just grateful for the fans. Takes, you know, forever and a day and will give you all the time in the world to talk to you. Uh, just a really great guy. Uh, if you get the chance to meet this living legend, seriously, make time for Roger Sweet. He is just... An amazingly polite, wonderful, grateful, uh, humble human being, and uh, I, I personally was blown away by him. I'm I'm really glad I got the opportunity to meet him, and, and it's such a small convention too that just blows my mind. So at the convention, I uh, got to dig through some long boxes and some short boxes, mostly focusing on the Punisher run. I was really looking for uh, Spider-Man 129, that first appearance with Punisher, but everybody that seemed to have him there at the con had it slabbed, a uh, CGC graded book, and I don't I don't want that. I, I want a raw book. I want something that uh, that's just natural, if you will. But I did find some early appearances of Punisher. We're gonna go over that. It was a lot of fun. Um, of course, uh, I had my beautiful four-year-old daughter in tow and uh, my time at the convention was kind of dictated by her energy level. So at about noon, we had to, we had to tap out and uh, call it a day, but still had a great experience at this convention. Can't wait to show you what I got. So let's just dive into this week's book, shall we? So first up this week, uh, picked up from my local comic book store. I feel like this needs to be the first book we talk about, everybody. We have The Simpsons Comics from Bongo Comics. This is the last issue of this run, issue 245. Uh, the Simpsons have come a long way. I believe this is the last season for the TV show, and uh, this is the last issue for this book. Now, you know, don't don't get too uh, too teary-eyed over the Simpsons. Uh, Bongo Comics isn't losing the the license to this or anything. They are going to have more Simpsons books. Uh, maybe under a different title, maybe or that, but the, the main run, this particular run that's been going on for years, uh, for 245 issues has come to an end. And uh, it just seemed appropriate to make this the first book this week. Uh, I've got a soft spot for Simpsons, as many of you do, I'm sure. Um, I've kind of fallen out of uh, watching the show in recent years, but uh, when I found out this was the last issue, you know, that nostalgia bug starts biting at you and you just had to get this. I had to get this. It's a nice little cover here. Uh, you've got uh, Marge, Homer, Lisa, Bart, Maggie, Santa's Little Helper, Snowball 2. And in the background, you've got a bunch of covers from previous issues of the Simpsons comic. The story inside this book uh, goes a lot like a normal episode of Simpsons. The story also has some references to early uh, Matt Gorning art. I'm, I'm, I believe, I'm sure there are more little hidden gems like that in this book that were just over my head because I haven't, I'm not super diehard into everything and anything that Simpsons. I'm just a fan. You know, it was a, it was a very enjoyable book. It felt like an episode. It didn't feel like it was a cheap episode. This was a really cool thing. The last few pages, rather than putting ads in the comic book, they just started with issue one and went through every cover of this run to get until they got to the end. They even put this uh, this cover on the very back too. This is a neat little neat little thing for the fans, I thought. You know, in the story, Homer comes home, he uh, he believes Mr. Burns due to 
due to his brilliance, Mr. Burns is going to give him a lot of money. And when he gets home, he finds that his family is not there. And he's a little puzzled by this, but he doesn't waste a whole lot of time thinking about it. He heads to Moe's. We then cut with Marge and the kids, and they are out shopping. And everybody's getting a special little toy. Uh, Lisa gets a book, Angelica Button, again with unicorns, and uh, Bart gets a, gets a slingshot. Um, I, these, these are references to earlier things that have happened in The Simpsons, obviously, and it's a, just a nice little nod to the fans. And uh, the kids are like, it's too bad Maggie can't speak because she could pick out her toy, and Marge is like, well, you know, there's a special, do a special bond between mother and daughter or mother and baby. And I think I know what she would like. And so they go to a pet store, and Maggie's all excited. She's all thrilled. And uh, Marge uh, wants to buy a cute, uh, tells, the, tells the sales clerk, I want to buy a cute pet, but a cheap pet. I've only got 10 bucks. And the, the sales clerk is like, I eh, can't do that for you. But you can check the discount aisle. These are all animals we've found uh, in the forest off of the, the uh, nuclear site where Homer works. And uh, these animals have slight genetic deficiencies. And uh, they settle on a rabbit with one ear. Let me find a picture of him here. Here you go. Settle on a rabbit with one ear. Uh, and the art and the style is one of those references to early Matt Gorning stories and, and art. Uh, you know, the book is just like that. It's a, it's a fun, wholesome story. And, you know, it was, for the last issue, I just I felt compelled to get it. Um, I don't I don't have any urge to run out and try and complete a Simpsons run or read any other Simpsons books for that matter. You know, I, I even tried really hard to read uh, Futurama comics when uh, after the series got canceled the second time because I was like, screw that. I'm going to support this show. Uh, even if I can only support it through comics, I want them to know I'm willing to chip out money for, for more episodes. So... If I can only do that through comics, I'm going to vote by buying the comics. But I was never really that taken back by the comics of Futurama. I didn't really enjoy them like I did the show. This felt, to me, closer to the show. I, I did enjoy it. But again, not racing out to get to go collect the series. So here is Simpsons Comics issue 245, the end of the run for The Simpsons. Beautiful book. And uh, probably not worth the bag I just put it in or, or the micro chamber paper I used. But uh, nostalgia pull, that's why I grabbed it. All right, guys, the next book, another what if book. What if Marvel Comics went metal with Ghost Rider? This title is extremely misleading, at least for me. To me, when I picked up the book, what if Marvel Comics went metal with Ghost Rider? Just like, what if Ghost Rider was a metalhead or some some aspect of that, some something in that realm? But that that's not what it is. You've got this is a fun story and um, very meta, and I think the title is meta too, along with all that. It starts off in Marvel Comics offices, and they uh, you know they'll go where their money is, and they are. Uh, they are being paid by a death metal band to uh, create a custom comic for them using ink made from their own blood. So this gives you an idea of how metal they are. The book goes into way more detail about how metal this band is. And uh, about a little over halfway through it, uh, they finally become too metal, if you will. I don't want to give a whole lot away because it was a fun read. Um, but uh, they finally get two metal that one of the interns working at Marvel is Ghost Rider and he, he gets all skull flamey and tries to set things in order. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. And it was an enjoyable read. Um, it, it was one of my more favorite of these new What If stories. And, uh, but I will say this, this was not, this is not the Ghost Rider I know. I, I'm, I know through, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, and comic book covers that uh, Ghost Rider is no longer a motorcycle riding Johnny Blaze. He is a, you know, what is it, a, a, some muscle car riding flaming awesome of, of what have you. And I'm just, I'm not familiar enough with this incarnation. I enjoyed it. 
do I enjoy it enough to start reading Ghost Rider and modern Ghost Rider and go into that realm? No, I'm pretty happy with uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider as it is. This was just a fun one if one off book to pick up and read. I enjoyed it. It was four dollars. It was uh, worth the price for sure. And uh, yeah, you've got my recommendation to read this, especially if you work in the comics industry. I'm talking to you, Tom B. Long. Um, I think you would enjoy the shit out of this book. It was uh, it was super meta in that respects, and uh, I think. You know, I, I, they, they definitely had fun with this. And even if you don't know anything about the comics industry, I think you'd have fun with this too. Uh, it's a good book. So the $4 book from Marvel, What If Marvel Comics Went Metal with Ghost Rider? To me, a misleading title, but it works once you start reading it. Uh, very enjoyable. Check it out. I just realized I didn't have my secondary camera going, and I apologize for that. Uh, my next book, Strictly Completely pulled it for the art on the cover. This is Daredevil, latest issue, could not tell you the issue number because it's not on here. This is one of those virgin variant covers where there is no writing on it. Um, there is no writing on this, whereas DC does a little bit of writing at the bottom so you know what the comic book run is and the issue number. I like these plain ones. These, this is a beautiful cover. I had to have it because of that. Marvel definitely stepping up the game with the uh, Virgin variants to compete with DC and in my opinion this is definitely giving them a run for the money. They went completely blank. Uh, just made it about the art and uh, I'm sure DC will have an answer to this in a few months. Like I said, I couldn't tell you anything about this book. In fact, as I am putting the micro chamber paper in it right now is the first time I will have opened this book. Beautiful. To oh, it's got the issue number on the back. So Daredevil uh, 609 the variant virgin blank, the variant virgin cover, uh, four dollar book, uh, beautiful cover, beautiful cover. I, I highly doubt the video is giving this any justice whatsoever. Um, and you know, I had seen this book uh, online earlier in the day before I went to the comic book store, and uh, I was like, hey, you know, it, it stuck out to me, but I wasn't like, oh, I have to have this. It was when I saw it in person, I was like, I had to have this. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful virgin cover from Marvel Comics Daredevil 607, I think. Just, just a beautiful looking book. Alright, we're getting into my favorite books. These are the blank variant books. Both these next books came online to me. Uh, I wasn't able to find them at my local comic book store. Uh, here is Robotech number one. Pretty much bought this to support the writer. It helped that it was a blank, but the writer, Simon Furman, is known for writing a lot of Transformers comics. So uh, this is just showing my support for him. I might crack this one open and read it, and I'll tell you why. When I ordered, pre-ordered this blank variant online, uh, the logo was in color. It was a yellow variant. It was a yellow logo, like the Robotech logo, for those of you who are familiar with Robotech, I was quite, quite disappointed to get this in the mail and find that it was not colored. And honestly, what it looks like to me is they took the yellow logo and they just printed it in black and white. That is pathetic, quite honestly. It's a serious disappointment for me. Uh, we, yeah, here we go. You look at the first page, you can see the standard cover that came with the book. You can see the yellow it is. It, it's just like they printed it in black and white. They didn't even try. Um, I don't know how big Titans Comics is here and uh, what their excuse is, but uh, yeah, this is uh, not cool. Uh, not cool. I know that in the past when uh, I see uh, blank variants pop up online, I've, I've kind of learned to try and wait as long as I can before I, I get those pre-ordered. Because oftentimes there's a logo change. They, uh, they've decided not to go with the logo that's on the preview image or the logo of the previous issue. Uh, I've kind of learned that lesson the hard way. Sometimes there's titles and I just can't wait. This, this was one of them. However, when I look at the same online retailer for this, this cover and this variant, it shows up blank with a yellow Robotech logo. And uh, it just, just grinds my gears, if you will. I'm, uh, I'm quite disappointed in that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad I only got one. <laughs> uh, 
but this is not uncommon. It is not uncommon for the art on any cover, honestly, to change before it hits the newsstands. Uh, and, and kind of my advice is, unless you think it's a book that's just going to sell out like crazy, hold off on pre-ordering it as long as you can, because you're the longer you wait, probably, I, I believe the longer you wait, the more realistic uh, your expectations will be uh, of what the cover is, because they, they do try to keep that art updated. This is just an example of uh, where I got burned. Um, and I wonder how many people out there who also got this blank variant feel the same way I do. Uh, $4 book from Titan Comics. Uh, I may give it a read just because Simon Furman uh, is involved. But man, seriously disappointed with that uh, logo. Seriously disappointed. All right, and now a blank variant that I got just because it made me think of my daughter. This is from Diamond Comics, issue number one, Rainbow Bright. I have some, uh, I have some blank variant uh, books uh, for children, mostly uh, Disney comics, uh, blank variants, that uh, I do get artists to work on, and uh, I have shown off online before. And, and the art I get on there is just inspired by what my daughter is into at the time. Uh, the last one I had done at Emerald City Comic Con was a Disney uh, blank variant with... Uh, I had Dory from Finding Nemo and um, uh, uh, Scamp from Lady and the Tramp playing together on the cover because she really likes those two characters. And uh, I think Rainbow Bright was just... That was that purchase for that. It was just to see how and if it my daughter will inspire me in some way to come up with something for this as well. And this is from Dynamite Comics, Rainbow Bright, issue number one, the blank variant. Uh, this one looks exactly as it did online. Uh, and this was one I pre-ordered early on as well. So I could have been easily burnt by this too, but I also know that at least with Dynamite Comics, they haven't done anything as drastic as push out, show something in color and then push out a print it in black and white version. Um, so that's something for me to keep in mind with Titan in the future, that's for sure. Or maybe that was a lesson learned with them, I don't know. Time will tell. However, uh, Rainbow Bright, issue number one. Very rainbowy, beautiful cover. Uh, nice blank variant. Okay, now we go on to my books I picked up from the local convention here, the Bellingham Comic Con. Uh, like I said, my, my main focus was on completing the uh, Punisher run. Uh, I was looking for a couple other books, too. I kind of struck out on that. But for Punisher finds, I did find some good books. Starting with The Amazing Spider-Man 134, the first appearance of Tarantula. This also the story also contains the Punisher. Um, this is like the third or fourth appearance of the Punisher ever. Uh, and it's in Amazing Spider-Man. His first couple appearances, his first few, uh, were in Amazing Spider-Man. And, uh, uh, yeah, so those are, some of, those are some of the earlier books I'm trying to pick up. His first appearance, man, is super expensive, that's for sure. Uh, no doubt about that. This book is in by no means uh, perfect condition. Uh, it's been read. It doesn't look like it's been horribly abused or anything. It doesn't look like it's been faded by light. Uh, but it's just been a loved issue, and uh, I was okay with that. It was a $12 book for me. I think I ended up only spending 10 on it. Uh, you can see the Punisher here. And uh, when I found this book, when I found any of these books, uh, I would ask the dealer if it's okay for me to flip through them. And I asked that because uh, I have been burned. I have learned the hard way. Uh, you spend a lot on a book, and you find that there's an ad clipped out, which reduces the price significantly. Uh, or there's a, a, yeah, there's just something missing in it. So, you know, I went through it very carefully. Some dealers I've asked that to will say no, but I will flip through it with you watching. And uh, that's fine. And if a dealer just flat out says no and won't flip through it with you or doesn't want you to flip through it, then you don't buy the book from them. Uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely a good thing to ask so you know what you're getting. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked with the quality of this book for 12 bucks or 10 bucks. And, uh, but man, that, the Amazing, amazing Spider-Man 129 is a pricey book. That's, that's going to 
cost me a few bucks when I find it. I'd like to not find a, a terrible copy of it either. Something in this condition I'd be thrilled with. And this is, a, this is an extra bang for the buck because it's the first uh, appearance of the villain Tarantula. So here it is in the Mylar, Amazing Spider-Man 134. First appearance of Tarantula, it also contains the Punisher, closing in my Punisher run. Super stoked about that, super happy to have found these books. And uh, I'm getting there, I'm getting there guys. Next up from the Bellingham Comic Con was a great find, The Amazing Spider-Man 162. On this cover we've got the Punisher along with Nightcrawler. Uh, this is just a wonderful, wonderful cover. $8 book for me from the convention, I was happy to pay it. Um, this one to me, not knowing a whole lot about this particular cover, does look like it's slightly faded. Uh, not losing sleep over it. Again, I, I want the story. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to read this. I know I'm sounding like a, uh, a broken record, guys. I'm gonna have to do some YouTube videos of uh, my read-through and what my thoughts are from the read-through of reading The Punisher and let you guys know what I think. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. I mean, have I talked about it enough? Are you guys interested in wanting to know my thoughts on it? Uh, I, 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 you know, if you let me know, I'll do it. If you don't let me know, I don't know if I'll just read it and not talk about it. Uh, I've done that recently with uh, Transformers Generation 2. I read through it, but I haven't done any videos on it because uh, I don't know if anyone's really that interested in it other than me. Yeah, again with this dealer, I asked if I could flip through it. He was totally cool with me flipping through the book. Um, although for an $8 book, you probably didn't care who flipped through it. But uh, yeah, you just, you want to check your books. If you're spending, spending money on them, you want to check them. So guys, here is The Amazing Spider-Man 162. Got the Punisher on the cover. Oh man, I'm close. I'm getting close to completing this. I'm super stoked. I'm having fun hunting them down. It's getting, it's becoming a little bit of work now that I'm down to the last few books, but it's, uh, I'm stoked. So the last book I'd like to talk about here from the Bellingham Comic Con is a book uh, I've shown here on the show before, Masters of the Universe exclusive preview. This is the first uh, blank cover specifically designed to be sketched on. And uh, I took it to the con and I had Roger Sweet sign it. Uh, Roger is, is just an amazing guy. He talked to me for way too long. He was very courteous with his time. And uh, I got to share with him some stories about what he man meant to me, and he just was thrilled by it, absolutely thrilled. And uh, uh, as I've talked about this cover in the past, this is uh, this cover is glossy. Artists hate working on this cover, uh, so Roger signed it in Sharpie, and I let this thing breathe for a good eight minutes before I put it back in the bag because I didn't want it to smudge at all. And uh, I've been checking it. I've checked it twice since I've gotten back from the convention, and it's nothing's rubbed off onto the onto the mylar. So I'm really happy about that. I think it's I think it's in there. Um, and uh, I just love this since this is a terrible book for doing sketches on, which is what it was designed for. I'm going to use it and collect signatures um, as I run into voice actors or uh, people that worked on the action figures. By gosh, I'm going to have them sign this thing because I think that's a super cool use for, for sketch covers, blank covers, um, especially for this one when it sucks to draw on. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm super thrilled with this and uh, yeah, I really, I, this was the highlight for me for Bellingham Comic Con. Roger Sweet, if you get the opportunity to meet this living legend, please do yourself the favor and, and meet him. Amazing guy. And that is it, guys, for Bag and Board this week. Now, I want to remind you, uh, I am going to Chicago to attend the TFCon, the Transformers Convention. Uh, while I'm there, I'm going to be doing a lot of video, a lot of tweeting, a lot of stuff for the Transmissions podcast. Uh, I will include links to some of their social media and their websites down below. If you want to follow them, then you'll see some of the stuff I'm doing there. Uh, but I'm going to have a ton of video to be messing with, to be editing. I'll be doing that at the convention. I'll be doing that after I get home from the convention. And uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. I've done this for a few years now. I love doing this kind of stuff, but it keeps me busy for a while. So bag and board episodes might be on hold for a little bit, but I have pre-recorded a few Yoshi casts. 
They're not specifically about comics. They're about things I'm interested in. And uh, every Tuesday morning, I'm going to try and post one of those just so that there's something going out for me so you guys know I'm still here. But that's going to be my focus for a little bit is getting this transmission stuff done. And uh, we'll see what happens at the end of that. And then I'll, I plan on coming back and just picking up the bag and boards at that time. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, you'll find in the description all the products I use to bag and board my books. The, uh, the bags, the boards, the gloves, the tape, the micro chamber paper. Uh, if you got any questions, let me know. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I've had a lot of fun. I think it's neat to be able to do this and not feel like I'm doing it alone, that I've got friends out there watching me do it and I get to share with them what I think about the books and I hope you'll share with me what you think about them by leaving me messages so I so we can all talk and have this discourse together. But I'm, I'm, I'm talking because it's late and I'm tired and I need to get this edited and up. Thank you guys for joining me and uh, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the videos I have ready to shove out until the next bag and board. And until next time, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.